So you have decided to dive into the world of teamfight tactics, but don't worry, it's not like jumping into a pool without knowing how to swim. With this guide, you will be floating in no time. I'm Frobe, I've started to play TFT since set 1, and I've hit challenger multiple times while also playing competitively. Whether you're a beginner, or someone who already played TFT but had a long break because of many reasons, life or other video games, I can guarantee you that this guide will help you in being better at TFT and understanding better TFT. So let's dive right in and we start with the players and the stages. In TFT you're one of the 8 players in a match, fighting each other in a series of rounds. You think of it like a mini tournament against 7 other players. Each match is divided into several stages, each with different rounds. We've got the carousel rounds, the PvE rounds and the PvP round. So buckle up because there's always something new happening. Speaking of new things, each set always has a lot of new units. And if we talk about units, it's actually champions. It's kind of the same, we just use different words. Now champions in TFT aren't like potato chips. You can't just pick one and be done with it. You've got to strategize and pick the right ones for your team. In set 9, we have a roster of champions from across the realms of Runeterra, each with their own traits and abilities. The cost of these champions vary from 1 gold to 5 gold. The higher the cost, the higher the power. It's like real life, but with less budgeting. And once you have 3 copies of the same unit, they star up. In general, gaining 1 star is multiplying the power of a unit by 1.8 times. Most of the time, you want to play with 2 star units. If your board is mostly made of 2 star units, then chances are you have a decent board that can win fights. But what's a champion without their friends? In TFT, friends come in the form of synergies. When you have multiple champions of the same trait on the board, they activate a synergy, giving them more powerful bonuses. For instance, the Juggernaut trait allows all Juggernauts to be tankier. The more Juggernauts you have on the board, the stronger the synergy is. It's like when you go with your friends in a party wearing the same outfit, you just feel more powerful. Make sure to activate the synergies of your best units on the board. If your main carry is, let's say, Lux, and she has neither Demacia nor Sorcerer, she will have a very limited impact during the fight. And where do we get the champions? From the shop, of course. Imagine it as going to your local shop, but instead of buying fruits and vegetables, you can find champions that will fight for you. It's very similar, happens every day. The shop refreshes every round, so you always have new options. You can also spend gold to refresh the shop manually, but don't go too wild. We aren't made of money here. The shop will randomly show units based on your level. The higher your level is, the most likely you will find high tier champions. You naturally gain 2 XP per round, but you can also decide to spend some gold to buy XP and level up faster. It's like you're trying to invest first, and then after you harvest the strong fruits, which are the legendary units. To give you some general tips to follow as a beginner, at stage 2 you should slowly level from level 3 to level 5. At stage 3, and it's usually at stage 3-2 or stage 3-5, you should push level 6. At stage 4-2 or 4-5, you should push level 7. And at stage 5-2 or 5-5, you should push level 8. There are also other leveling strategies but it will require more in-depth explanation to go through them and this is reserved for another video that I'll release later. You also gain 5 gold per turn, but you can earn more gold by keeping them up to 50 gold, because at 50 gold you earn 5 extra gold per turn due to interest. Ah, capitalism. You also earn 1 extra gold every time you win against a player. And finally, you can earn up to 3 gold per turn if you lose or win consecutive fights against players. Try also to maximize your sources of income so you can generate enough money and keep up with the leveling strategy I just described earlier. Now let's go into the nitty gritty, the fights. It's like a chess match but with giant fireballs and axes flying towards the board. Your champions automatically fight the enemy's champion in each round. Unless their ability says otherwise, they will always target the closest enemy until he dies and they will switch their focus after. For this reason, it is recommended to make your units target the same enemy when possible to kill it faster instead of spreading the damage. It's called focus fire. Obviously, there are also many situations where this strategy is not the best, 
but again this requires more advanced knowledge about the game and I will keep that for another video later. Positioning and champion selection are key here. Make sure to refer to the UI by clicking right on the champion and see what Riot recommends for positioning. Next up is the mana. In TFT, mana is what your champions use to cast their abilities. Some champions are mana hungry such as Keisa who requires a lot of mana to use her ability. Others not so much such as Ari. Each champion gains mana by attacking normally to another champion. It's usually 10 mana, but you have also other ways to gain mana. The second most common way to gain mana is by taking damage. And this is how most tanks will actually gain mana, they will just take a lot of damage, you will see their mana bar filling up and then after they will use their ability. You have also other ways like items, synergies, but for this you will need to understand the items and all the synergies and learn the game little by little. And now on to items. These are the accessories of TFT, like how a good tie can make an outfit, a good item can make a champion. Items in TFT comes in three types the component items, the completed items, and the unbuildable items. The components are what you will mostly find in the early and mid game. They are not powerful and provide just a little bit of stats. You find them either by winning the PvE rounds or picking them during carousers. However, you can combine two components to make an item significantly more powerful. Combining a road with sparing gloves makes a general gauntlet that provides ability power to the holder but, most importantly, allows the holder to strike critically with its ability to deal extra damage and make big numbers for screenshots. If you are unsure what to build for your units at first, check the UI by clicking right on the unit. Riot will give you a list of recommended items for your units. Even if they are not necessarily the best, it's still a great way to get started and be less confused at first. But now let's talk rapidly about the unbuildable items. And don't worry, this is not like IKEA, it's not unbuildable because it's impossible to understand how to build it. Unbuildable items are things you can't make yourself but can obtain during the game thanks to certain synergies or augments. These are the most powerful items but also the hardest one to get. We have the Radiant items, the Own items and now the Shimmer Scale items. There is a lot of reading, but to make things easier to remember, most items with swords or bows are good for AD carries or physical damage carries if you prefer. Most items with rows or tears are good for AP carries or magical damage carries. Belts, chain vests and cloaks are usually good for making defensive items for your tanks. Now let's discuss about augments. The spiciest thing of TFT. These are game changing bonuses you acquire during the match. It's like finding a secret menu at your favorite restaurant and suddenly you've got options you never knew about. There's a whole new variety of augments available changing up your economy, making your comp stronger or adding ways of playing the game. They appear at every game at stage 2-1, 3-2 and 4-2. Economic augments are the ones that will make you richer or will make you earn more XP. Rich gets richer is a perfect example. Ah, capitalism. Combat augments are the ones that will make your balls stronger. Cybernetic bulk allows your unit to gain max health if they hold at least one item. And finally, there are some other augments that will make you feel you are playing another game. Such as Build Different, where your team gains massive amount of stats if you don't activate synergies. They are also divided into three tiers, Silver, Gold and Prismatic. The latter is the most powerful augment tier and should be picked wisely. As a rule of thumb, always try to have one economic augment and two augments that makes your board stronger. Now let's talk about the new feature of the set 9, the portals and the legends. At the beginning of each game, you will see three portals from different regions. Each portal will add one extra rule that will apply to everyone. For instance, Jace's workshop will force all Omen to be prismatic during the game. You can vote for the portal you want to play with and at the end of the timer, the game will randomly choose a portal based on the votes. The more votes the portal gets, the more likely it will be chosen for the game. So even if you're the only one voting for a specific portal, there's still a chance that the game will choose that portal and you have 7 players that will hate you for this game. Now let's move on to Legends. 
This is like going to a buffet and seeing all the options available, but then realizing that you have your own personal chef ready to cook up a dish just for you. When you select your legend at the start of the game, you will have tailored augments available at different stages, allowing you to pivot your strategy based on what's going on. If you want more money, you can pick Time Cash as it will offer you a guaranteed economic augment. If you like to have stronger boards, then you should pick Master Yi as he will always offer augments to strengthen your team. And if you like to collect many items, then Ezreal is good for you because he will give you more components. If you already know what you want, then then pick the one suited for your playstyle. But if you are indecisive, then pick the Poro. It will make all the augments random. It's as if you're asking the chef to surprise you instead of asking him what you want. Maybe I should pick time catch all the time because I keep on talking about food and maybe I have a problem. You might still think it's still too much information and it's still too difficult to apply what I just said in your games. And it is normal because right now what you lack is practice. As for practice, what could be better than combs that are designed specifically for beginners? And I have made 5 of them for you. They are not necessarily the strongest one, but they will be the ones that will make you learn the game the fastest. And I'm sharing everything in this video. See you at the top of the ladder.